Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today's topic, as you heard, or the reminder we're going to be talking about, is the importance and the status of good manners. And this topic, perhaps, sometimes when we hear about it, we might neglect it as a topic. If we were to see it online on a YouTube talk, good manners, maybe we, this wouldn't be the, the subject we want to focus on. Thinking that it's not really, it's something that has some, you know, it's, it's good, it's important, but not really understanding the true status of this, of this topic and its importance. And we, know, we want to know the importance of something. You look at the ajr of having good manners and look at the danger, for example, of not having that. And then you really see the status of anything, whether it be good manners or anything else. So in this topic today, when we mentioned the hadith that shows the different virtue, all the hadiths that show the virtues of good manners. And towards the end, when we mentioned one of the hadith that shows the danger of having bad manners, we'll understand the true status and the importance of hadith. And one of the things I want for my brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, is to reflect on what is the relationship. And this is something quite profound if you focus on it. And if you look at the relationship between fasting and good manners. And many of the things, subhanAllah, that we should have as Muslims throughout the year, not just in Ramadan, and you'll see there's a direct relation. There's a link between the fasting and between this as well. When you look at the virtues of good manners first of all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said about the good manners inma bu'ithtu liutimmim makarim al-akhlaq that indeed i was sent to perfect good manners and right away knowing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a rahma lil alamin as a mercy to mankind and knowing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last of all of the prophets sent to mankind. Right away we know and we understand that the, the fact that he was sent to perfect good manners, it shows us the status and the importance of having good manners. It's part of why he was sent alayhi salatu was salam. Also with our good manners, when you look at the virtues, you become the best of the believers in faith. And you become from the dearest and the closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. And you reach the level of the one who is fasting and praying throughout the night. And also, you will have the key deed, which will be the heaviest on the scale of good deeds, and the most deed that will enter the people into the paradise. And a guarantee from the Prophet ﷺ with a house in the highest levels of the Jannah. Now reflect with me on these hadith that show us the status and the importance of good manners in Islam. First of all, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْمَلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا That the best of the believers in faith are the ones who have the best manners. The best of the believers in faith. If you want to be for the best of the mu'mineen, the cream of the crop, the top, then you have to be the best in faith. And this is very important because many people who start to practice their religion, you'll find a lot of times they, they have a, a lacking in good manner. He might be multism in practicing and other aspects of the deen, but when it comes to his manners, you'll find that his manners are not so good. Even I recall one time I was in one of the malls here giving a lecture, and at the end of the lecture, the lady asked me, why is it that so many practicing Muslims don't smile? And I said, well, I, I said, I don't know, we have to ask them, but it's true. You'll find many of the practicing brothers and sisters, they, like they think that you have to be so serious and because you're now you're a practicing Muslim, you can't laugh and you can't be serious. This, one, this goes against the manners and the way of Rasulullah When the Sahaba described him, they said, you, we never saw him. Illa mubtasiman. Except that he was smiling, alayhi salatu wasalam. Always smiling. This is the sunnah and the way of the Rasulullah And this is part of having good manners. When someone, who he treats you nice, he's polite, he's smiling. That's part of good manners. So if you want to be the most complete in faith, then you have to be from those who have good manners. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyama ahasinukum akhlaqa That the most dearest from you and the most nearest to me on the yawm al-qiyama will be the ones who are best in manners. So the ones who will be most beloved by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the ones who will be closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
on the day of judgment are those who are the best in their manners. And the Prophet وسلم, told us, إن المؤمن لا يدرك بحسن خلقه درجة الصائم القائم that the believer can reach with his good manners the rank of the one who is fasting throughout the day and praying throughout the night. All of this, you get this ajr, this reward with having good manners. And the Prophet وسلم, said, ما من شيء في الميزان أثقل من حسن الخلق that there's nothing heavier in the scale of good deeds meaning Yom Al-Qiyamah, than having good manners. The heaviest thing of all of the actions. And so, like I said, we, we always focus on a lot of other of the rewards and the fadail a'mal and the good things that we need to focus on. But we don't sit down and talk enough about having good manners and the reward of having good manners. If you pray duha, you get this. If you pray tahajjud during the night, you get this. If you get sadaqah, if you read this amount of the ayat from the Quran, you get this ajr. We focus on this. Well, the heaviest thing the heaviest action in the scale of good deeds is the good manners and how much do we talk about it, how much do we remind ourselves about it. The Prophet وسلم, also told us, أَكْثَرْ مَا يُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ تَقْوَ اللَّهُ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ That the most things that will make people enter into the Jannah, meaning from their actions, he said it's going to be from the good manners and the taqwa. Good manners and taqwa from the most things that enter the people into the Jannah. So here the good manners we see it's one of the keys to enter into the Jannah. Most people enter through the Jannah, through the good manners, and through the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he promised, he promised alayhi salatu in the hadith when he said, Ana zaim, that I guarantee, bi bayti a'la al-jannah liman hasana khuluquhu, that I guarantee a house in the Jannah for the one, for the, in the highest level of the a'la al-jannah, the highest level of the Jannah for the one who perfects his good manners. All of these hadith, my dear brothers and sisters, show us the status and the importance of good manners. And what is significant for us as Muslims is not just to know the reward, but to implement it. And why do we remind ourselves of this reward? Is in order to put it into action. We know what we get for it, but to remind ourselves. Today, or this morning, I had a bit of an issue when I went, and it was something I, which I thought was really easy. I had to get my son, take him to get his, some stitches out. He had some stitches above his eyes, so he had to get them taken out. So they said, you have to go to this health center. It was a bit far, so I said, okay, but anyways, alhamdulillah, we have to go, we have to go. So I went to this health center. They said, actually, no, it's not this health center. It's another health center, which is even more far. So here I got upset. And I, <laughs> I thought about getting a bit, you know, rough with, with, the, with the employees. But they're saying, we can't do it, you have to go there. I said, okay, it's not my fault. I was sent from another one of your centers. And they sent me here. I, I didn't come out of the blue and, and make a mistake. It wasn't my fault, you know. <laughs> They told me to come here. They gave me the paper, said, go to this one. And actually, I took the address and I came. So I said, and it's their fault, not my fault. Anyways, the point being is that right away, I remembered I'm fasting. It's Ramadan. You have to control yourself. You don't want to mess up your fast. At the same time, I remembered the lecture I have prepared for today, which is about good manners. So I said, you're going to go talk about good manners and you're about to, you're fasting, you're about to raise your voice and, and get upset with the people. And they're, they're doing their job. And I didn't agree with them, but I said, alhamdulillah. I let them know. I didn't think it was correct, but I kept my manners, I kept my cool, and I, I, I went on my way, alhamdulillah. So this is the, the reminder, is to remind us of the importance, remind us of the ajr, but also to put it into action. And when you look into the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the perfect role model. He was the al-uswa al hasana And how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how did Allah describe the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ that you are indeed of a great moral character. This is the description of who? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at the ta'kit, the emphasis put on it in the ayah, very small ayah. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You have inna and the lamb to put double emphasis on the high moral character of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about the khuluq, the manners of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. That his manners were that of what? Of the Qur'an. Meaning that all of the good that you find in the Qur'an, you'll see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the first to implement it and to act upon it. All of the negative things, the bad characteristics that were ordered to stay away from in the Qur'an, you'll find that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the farthest from those characteristics.
This is what it means that his khuluq, his manners were that of the Qur'an. And subhanAllah, as we reflect on the Qur'an, we're in the month of the Qur'an, it would have been a good project, even now in the last 10 days we can do this and we can focus on it and benefit from it. But even if we want to make it a project for after Ramadan, as we're reading through the Qur'an, and we search for the manners, the adab, the different adab and manners and conduct that we're supposed to conduct ourselves with as Muslims. And we search throughout the Quran, we're reflecting on some of the meanings. And we write them down. And then we ask ourselves, how are we when it comes to implementing these characteristics? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, nasi husna, For example, and speak good to the people. It's a, a small ayah, but it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. nasi husna, And speak good to the people. What does this, when we, we reflect on this and then we ask ourselves, how am I when it comes to speaking good to others? It's just one of the commands, one of the adab, one of the manners that we're supposed to learn and have from the Quran. And we reflect on, every, on, on ourselves. And this is how the Muslim should be. Not reflecting on others, that so-and-so, he, he has bad manners when he talks to other people. So-and-so, this. what about yourself? Because Yom Al-Qiyamah, when we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is he going to ask us about first of all? Ask about ourselves. How were your manners? Allah said, did, did you not know in the Quran that I told you, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna," And say good to the people. Have good speech. When you speak to everyone, be polite when you speak to the people. SubhanAllah. Here's the teaching of the Quran. How were you when you implemented it? How were you in following this command? When you look at the beauty of the implementation of husn al khuluq and good manners in Islam. We mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as the role model. How he was constantly smiling when he would meet his companions. He would joke with his companions. When he would shake one of their hands, he would pay attention to them. It's a respect. This is part of having good manners, Yaqwan. You respect the other people. Nowadays, when somebody's talking to you, and what are you doing? You're on your phone. You know, brother, and this is like, yeah, yeah. And you're looking at your, at your Facebook feeds and you're watching this. And someone's talking to you. Is this, is this good manners? Especially if it's someone like, in your, sometimes you'll find when you, you, it might be your wife. It might be your, your, your mother or something like this. And you're, and you're on your phone. That's disrespectful. Pay attention to the, the young guys here today. As you're uh, be, have, learning how to have respect for your parents. SubhanAllah. When your, your father's talking to you, your mother's talking to you, and you're, and you're on your phone looking at that. That's disrespectful. The Prophet Sallallahu when someone give him salams, how did he give salams alayhi salatu wasalam? Look at the respect. He's someone who, look at the status of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's someone who's very busy, but yet he would take the time, he would shake their hand properly. Not one of these just, you know, touch my hand and then go. He would shake the hand properly. He would stop and he said he would face the person that he was shaking their hand. And he would give them attention. He would pay attention to them. This is part of having, having good manners and how you deal with the people. When you look at the, the impact that having good manners would have on society, and I told you to reflect on Ramadan, if you look at the issues of what happens with road rage and not controlling ourselves, a lot of things happen in our societies as we drive that shouldn't happen. And that gets us very upset and sometimes over the edge. Do we control our tongues most of the time? Most of the time we have very negative things to say. Very foul things to say. Sometimes in Ramadan, we hold on and we say, we just, we say, just wait. Just wait until Ramadan's over. Huh? So in fact, let me, let me take a picture of your, of your license plate. Just so if I, can see, if I see you after Ramadan, I can give you a piece of my mind. SubhanAllah. <laughs> now, this is what Ramadan is teaching us. And look at the, the beauty that would impact it would have on the society. From the greetings of the Muslim. How do we greet one another? Hi, how you doing? This is the greeting of the Muslim. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. The first thing that we do when we meet one another, we, sp we spread the message of peace. The greetings, the greetings of peace. And how, do, how is our face when we meet our brothers? Smiling. How do we feel towards our brothers in Islam? When we meet them, we have love, respect for them. We care for them. We're honest when we deal with them. We don't cheat them. If something happens, we, we, we differ Maybe he makes a mistake. Maybe we made a mistake. We control our angers. We control our tongues. 
we're, for, we're forgiving and forgive. All of this falls into what? The importance of having good manners. My dear brothers and sisters, as we remind ourselves of the importance of having good manners, it's very important that we remind ourselves of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to those who don't have good manners. Because like we said in the beginning, you'll find that sometimes many people, they're very good when it comes to a lot of the things that they do. Imam al-Dhahabi in Sira Alam al he mentioned, rahimahullah, he said that you'll find many people from the Muslims when it comes to eating that which is haram, they're very keen on staying away from it. When it comes to even like when it, being involved maybe in interest, interest or, or, or haram dealings, you'll find a lot of them stay away from it. They want to stay away from it. When it comes, like he said, even like their clothes, making sure they're only wearing that which is halal. And we see this upon like when you go to the West, you'll find that somebody, he's very far from Islam, but he's very concerned about the dhabiha meat, making sure that's slaughtered the halal. Bismillah. <laughs> what about the other things that you're doing? Huh? One time there was a debate. One of the brothers told me, he said that, we were sitting with our non-Muslim colleague in, in London when he was working. And later, mashallah, the brother, mashallah, he was guided and he became, mashallah, from the, from the scholars he learned in Medina with us. He was saying that we're having a debate about uh, McDonald's. Is it permissible for a Muslim to eat it or not? So, so one of my colleagues, he used to eat McDonald's. He'd go have his Big Mac for lunch, but he would pray five times a day. He said, as for me, I was very hardcore. This is haram. It's not permissible to eat this. You know, in, 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 in London, because it's not halal slaughtered. Therefore, it's not the bihamid, it's haram. But he said, I didn't pray. But he was really into the, the, the bihamid, make sure the meat was halal. So the non-Muslim, who was listening to their debate, and he said, look, he said, I don't want to get into your religious rulings. And I don't know, he said, I'm not a Muslim. But he said, however, he said, my understanding, he said, I think that praying to God five times a day would be more important than is this burger halal or not? You know, he said, I think that's a little bit more important than this gets together. And he's right, he is, no doubt about that. So the, the point is, is that many times we focus on certain aspects and we forget, you know, the danger or, the, or what's happening if we have bad manners. You'll find someone that has, you know, he's practicing a lot of good. Like Imam al Dhabi said when he said, you'll find he's far away from the haram in certain issues. But when it comes to his tongue and controlling his tongue, when it comes to ghiba and namima, you say he's quick to fall into it. This is the traps of shaitan. We see ourselves, mashallah, we're good Muslims. We're practicing, we're praying five times a day. We're saying, mashallah, how many times we read the Quran this month in Ramadan. We're doing all of this good. But when it comes to talking about people behind their backs, you'll find that it's easy for many of us to do. And so we have to be careful. <coughs> in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about two different women. In the first part of the hadith, he said, Inna fulana, they said, Inna fulana tuqum al layl wa tusum al nahar wa taf'al al khayr wa tusaddaq. And the, the woman, she does uh, from the good that she gets up and prays during the night. She fasts throughout the day and she does the, this and that from the good. And she gives sadaqah. Sound good? So far, mashallah, Allah mubarak, mashallah. But she has a problem. There's something wrong with her. What is that thing that she does? He said, the jiranaha. But she harms her neighbors with what? Bilisaniha. She harms her neighbors with her tongue. Doesn't control her tongue, has bad manners in dealing with her neighbors. The Prophet وسلم, said, La khayra fiha. Hiya min ahli nar. Subhanallah. He said, There's no good in her. She is from the people of the hellfire. All of that good she was doing, it didn't benefit her. Why? Because she harmed her neighbors with her tongue. She couldn't control her tongue. She had bad manners. They asked her about another lady. They said, وَفُلَانَ تُصَلِي الْمَكْتُوبَ وَتَصَدَّقْ بِأَثْوَارِ That she, this woman, she only prays the five daily prayers. She's not doing it in the She's not getting up and praying at night. She's asleep. <laughs> She's not doing the... She's just doing the fard, that's it. And they said she gives sadaqah with athwar, which is like the dried, the dried milk, the pieces of dried milk. She's giving a little sadaqah here and there with that for the poor people. But they said, وَلَا تُؤْذِي أَحَدًا But she doesn't harm anyone. She has good manners. 
She's respectful of people. She doesn't harm anyone. The Prophet wasallam said about her, min ahlil jannah, that she is from the people of Jannah. Look at the status of the good manners and the dangers of having bad manners. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, calls us to into account, we realize this, the danger of the outcome. As we say, we need to reflect on the relationship between the fasting and between Ramadan and between the good manners. Who can tell me now some of the things? What is, from what you've heard now, what does Ramadan do to us to help us have good manners? To help us control our manners. Who can tell me? Uh, to be more patient. And as the Prophet said, that the, it's the miftah of the Faraj. The, the key that opens up things for you. Sabr miftah al Faraj. That opens up the, the things for you. It's the key to everything. The sabr. You have to have sabr. Even when it comes to doing, that's why the scholars, when they put the sabr and they divide it into three main categories, it's the sabr upon being. Obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fulfilling your duties And then having sabr to stay away from the ma'asi From the bad deeds That's also a form of sabr And then the sabr to deal with the difficulties The calamities which come in life That's also a form of sabr And the fasting is teaching you sabr It's teaching you how to control yourself When you're fasting And that person cuts you off on the road And you have some colorful phrases That you want to share with him And you have some uh, friendly hand gestures you would like to share with him as well huh? some welcoming hand gestures that you want to share with him what do you do when you're fasting right away you control yourself you remember and this, I'm fasting and that's the teachings of Rasulullah he told us that you know that to stay away from ill speech and all of these ill actions and he said if one of you is fasting and one of you and someone curses at him or fights with him what are we supposed to say in return in I'm fasting, I'm fasting. To remind himself and to remind yourself as well why you're refraining, why you're not falling into these things. But this is a Muslim only in Ramadan. That's the Muslim all throughout the year that we control ourselves. And this is the beauty of Islam, subhanAllah. We have the ability, we can, we can reply back. And that's not a sign of weakness. Pay attention, Yaqub. The, the, the beauty of our faith, and some of the brothers who are here, mashallah, they train martial arts. And one of the things they teach you in martial arts is about what? Being able to control yourself. It's not about being able to beat someone, it's about controlling yourself. Because if you're a martial artist, you know that most people you can beat them up. Because you're trained and he's not, right? But the strong one is the one who can control himself. This is what martial arts teaches the practitioner. Also, when it comes to Islam, what does Islam teach us? The Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالسُرْعَةِ that the one who is strong is not the one who can wrestle people down, not the one who can beat people up, but the one who can control himself at the time of anger. That's the sign of true strength, of being able to control yourself. And that's what Ramadan is teaching us. And if we want to reach this high level of Iman, and this high reward and these high virtues that we mentioned, these great virtues of having good manners, it starts with what the brother mentioned, of having sabr. What are some other things, the relationship, eh, Juan? Who, who, who can tell me something? Anything else? The relationship between good manners and fasting. So, eh, go ahead, brother. The rewards? Ah, very good. Because also, any, one of the things that Ramadan is teaching you is to try to gather up as many good rewards as you can. And also, the good manners is one of those rewards. So all this is where the great, in fact, if you look at what the Prophet has mentioned in the hadith, he said the most things that will enter the people into the Jannah, what are they? You remember? Good manners and what else? Who remembers the second one? And taqwa. Uh, he gets a gift, by the way. That's one of the questions. You can give him a gift at the end, inshallah. Because he mentioned the hadith. So he said, the Prophet he said, the most things that will enter the people into the Jannah is the taqwa of Allah and good manners. What is the relationship between the taqwa and the good manners in between Ramadan and fasting? That's one of the objectives, the main objective. Yeah, that's it. The main objective mentioned of fasting, Allah mentioned in verse 183 in Surah Al Baqarah that you obtain taqwa. Oh, you have believed. 
Fasting has been prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those who were before you, that you may obtain the taqwa, you, you achieve the taqwa. So that's the main objective mentioned about fasting, and that's one of the main things that enter the people into the Jannah. In the same hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the main two things that will enter the people into the hellfire. And pay attention to these two and the relationship between the fasting as well. What are the main two things? He said, Ali salatu was salam, alisan wal farj. The tongue and the private parts. By putting them at that which is haram. What is the relationship now between them and fasting? We're controlling our tongue all day long. We want to say something. In the Islam, in the Islam. We're controlling ourselves. We're, learning how, we're, we're, we're training ourselves. This is, a, this is a boot camp during the month of Ramadan. Also, you stay away from your relations with your spouses, which is halal for you outside of Ramadan. So you, if you can do it and stay away from it and during Ramadan, you can re restrain from outside of Ramadan as well. And this goes for the people who are not married as well, who sometimes shaitan gets them to fall into haram, one of the most things that went to the people into the hellfire. But what Ramadan teaches you? And many of the brothers and sisters, they, they control themselves in Ramadan and say, if you can do it in Ramadan, you can do it outside as well. And also the heaviest thing in the scale of good deeds, Yom Al-Qiyamah, talking about the, the reward and striving to get through it, is Husn al the heaviest thing in the scale of good deeds. So all of this reminds us of the relationship we have between the fasting and between Ramadan. And I'm going to end, end inshallah ta'ala, this reminder with two hadiths. One of them that shows us the importance and the, and the status of good manners. And one of them is a dua of the Prophet sallallahu the first hadith is the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu an. As he said, Awsani, he said the last thing, Akhir ma awsani bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prescribed for me. The last thing that he advised me with. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the end of his life, he knew that his end was near. He knew that perhaps he wouldn't see Mu'at, as he told him in one of the narrations, that perhaps he wouldn't see him again. He knew when he told the people during the Hajj, لعلي ما أراكم, that, that perhaps I won't see you after this year, بعد عامي هذا, after this year. So when he gave this wasiya to Mu'at as he was going to give da'wah to the people in Yemen, and it's very important to understand this as we live in a multi multicultural society. We live in a Muslim country, but we have many non-Muslims who live here with us, don't we? And when they look at Islam, they look at who? The Muslims, the ones who are implementing it. They look at us. They're coming now here to Qatar and they're looking at how the Muslims are. Doesn't matter if you're local or if you're a resident, you're a Muslim. So you're the one who represents Islam to them. The Prophet wasallam, as he gave this piece of advice, he said, as I put my foot into the stirrup on the saddle, as he got onto the saddle, he told Mu'adh radiallahu an. He said, make your character good to the people, ya Mu'adh ibn Jabal. This is one of the last things, the last thing he gave the advice to Mu'adh. And by the way, Mu'adh, the Prophet he loves Mu'adh. He told him on the hadith, ya Mu'adh, inni la uhibbuk. Oh Mu'adh, I love you. And the Prophet wasallam realized that perhaps he's not going to see him after this. This is the advice that he gave him to be successful and and his da'wah was to have good manners in dealing with the people. The Prophet ﷺ, from his du'as that he used to make, and this is a du'a that all of us should memorize and understand the meaning of, and then repeat it time and time again. He used to say, alayhi salatu was salam, Allahumma ahdini li ahsan al-a'mal. Oh Allah, guide me to the best of the deeds. And once again, many of us are keen upon this. What else did he say, alayhi salatu was salam? اللهم أهديني لأحسن الأعمال وأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت. He would say, Oh Allah, guide me to the best deeds and to the best manners. No one can guide to them to the best manners and his best and the best deeds except for you. Then he would say, عليه الصلاة والسلام in the same du'a, وقيني سيء الأعمال وسيء الأخلاق لا يقي سيها إلا أنت. And to protect me from bad deeds and bad manners. No one can protect me from them except for you, Ya Allah. This is the dua of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is a dua that we should learn the meaning of, memorize it, 
and implement it, put it into action, asking Allah to guide us to the best deeds and to the best manners, and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from bad deeds and bad manners. And Allah knows best. Allahu alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.